Robert Frost famously said, home is the place where when you have to go there, they have to take you in. It is a poignant statement and one with which I've squabbled over the years. The Presbyterian writer Anne Lamott has a take on home that resonates more deeply with me. She writes, for 20 years I have ached to go back home when there was nobody there to whom I could return. Jesus has gone back home and the family is not happy with him. He's in the middle of an intense teaching moment with crowds of people listening to his every word and someone goes to the door and comes back and whispers in your, his ear, your family is here. Imagine your first big speech and things are going great. It's, or it's your first big beautiful musical recital or your second week at your amazing new job or your third day as a teacher in the classroom or your first really big business deal. And right as you're getting on a roll, somebody leans over and says, your mom's here. Wait, what? My, my mom is here? Well, actually, your whole family's here. All of them. What? Where are they? They're outside. What do they want? Your concentration is broken. The flow is gone. Your train of thought is derailed. The messenger goes to the door and comes back and says, they want you to go with them. They think you've gone off your nut. Well, thanks. Jesus doesn't go to the door, doesn't go and engage. Instead, he asks, who is my mother? Who are my brothers and sisters? And looking at all those seated in a circle all around him, he says, look, here are my mother and my brothers, whoever does God's will is my brother or sister or mother. Just like that. Since we are Jesus, or not Jesus, since we are not Jesus, it generally does not work that way for us. Generally, it is a lot messier, a lot more complicated because regular humans, we're, we're kind of a mess. And our families made up of regular humans can get even messier. When it's someone else's family being so messy, it can be touching or even funny, but when it's our own, not so much. Almost everyone knows of a family like that, one that seems to just operate in the realm of chaos, occasionally jumping the space-time continuum into absolute absurdity, and sometimes it's our own family. And there's usually one family member who seems reasonably competent, and and in our own families, of course, that's us. While all the rest of them just swirl around in this reckless folly and craziness. The truth is that every family at some point goes off the rails, even if they're usually well balanced and stable and healthy. You've seen that cartoon, I bet. When I was a family therapist, it was thumbtacked to my wall. It's a drawing of this huge lecture hall with lots and lots and lots of chairs ready for this big plenary conference speech. And there's a banner that proclaims that this is the annual convention of adult children of normal parents. And all but two of the chairs in the hall are empty. Maybe it's some comfort to us to laugh at that and to realize that even in Jesus' time and long before, family relationships are tricky and complicated. We talked in Bible study on Wednesday about families, and we talked about family of choice and chosen family. That's a term that I first learned in LGBTQ plus communities from people whose family of origin, their biological families, had rejected them or vilified them or alienated them. Chosen family, or as one of my relatives describes it, I have family and I have people I'm related to. There's some overlap, but they're not all the same people. 
In a sense, our congregations, the people gathered by God to be the body of Christ in a particular time and place, our congregations can become our family of choice. That's not to say that our family of choice always has it all together, but there is a difference, and there should be. Jesus said, whoever does God's will, that's my family. So unlike our families of origin, this family of choice has a manual. We have a roadmap on how to relate to each other, how to be the beloved community. When we're growing up in our families of origin, we tend to imagine that the grown-ups know what they're doing, that they must have some kind of guidebook or something that instructs them in the tricky world of adulting. Anne Lamott, that writer I mentioned earlier, describes it so well. She says, it's funny. I always imagined when I was a kid that adults had some kind of inner toolbox full of shiny tools, the saw of discernment, the hammer of wisdom, the sandpaper of patience. But then when I grew up, I found out that life handed you these rusty, bent, old tools, friendships, prayer, conscience, honesty, and said, do the best you can with these, they will have to do. And mostly against all odds, she writes, they do. So we're different, this family of choice, this beloved community, and we should be different because we are God's chosen, holy and beloved. Jesus said, if we're doing God's will, we are his siblings. It's that clear and it's that simple. For those of us who are part of this family, sitting in a circle around Jesus, we can truly just look around at this beloved community and we can hear Jesus say to us, your family is here. Thanks be to God. Amen.